Before we start getting deeper into After Effects and before we start working with After Effects, I quickly want to go through a few important preferences. So let's choose Edit and then let's go to Preferences and choose General Preferences. You see that we have a bunch of different preferences here and a bunch of settings. We will not go into details here for every setting because most of the settings are already set to values that we can work with and we do not have to change a lot here. But there are some preferences that are important to talk about before we start working with After Effects. In the general tab, you can leave everything as it is. We do not have to care about anything right here. Now let's move on to the previews tab. And here also you can leave everything uh, at standard settings. The same applies for the display settings, for the import settings, and also for the output settings. So I will not change anything here. Standard settings here are fine. The next option here is the grid and guides. Here you can change the look of grid and guides. It's not important for now. We will take a look at these settings later on. Same applies for the labels. The first one we want to talk about right now is the media and disk cache. These preferences are quite important, uh, especially for the performance when you're working with After Effects. By default, the disk cache is not enabled. So if you open After Effects for the first time, disk cache is probably not enabled. And I would recommend that you enable it by clicking this box here. Let me quickly explain what a disk cache is. When you work with After Effects, you create previews. A standard preview in After Effects is a RAM preview. So After Effects will calculate your effects and your, your animations that you created to the RAM to create a preview video. If you enable the disk cache, After Effects has the possibility to save the frames that it calculated to your disk. The big advantage here is that you can access these files that are saved to your disk cache even if you close the application. So let's say you work on a project on one day, then you finish your work on this day, you close After Effects, and on the next day you start working again, then the files that After Effects saved to the disk cache will still be available and your previews that you calculated the last day will still be accessible. So what are the settings that we can specify for the disk cache? First of all, we can specify the maximum disk cache size and After Effects recommends that you allocate as much space as possible. And it also recommends, if you take a look here at this sentence here, for improved performance, choose a disk cache folder on a fast hard drive or SSD, separate from your footage and allocate as much space as possible. So that means if you are in the lucky position that you have a really cool computer system and that you have, let's say, two or three different hard drives in it, then you can put your disk cache on one hard drive and then you can get your footage, your video files and everything else on another hard drive. And the advantage of separating this is because then you do not have to read and write to one disk at the same time, which would create some kind of a performance bottleneck. The next cache here is the media cache. You see that we have no possibility to enable or disable the media cache. You only can choose a folder where the cache stores its data. The media cache is used when you work with video files or with other media files like audio files. After Effects will store certain information about these media files in a cache to improve and optimize the performance when you work with these media files, for example, when you preview them. After Effects will create uh, different versions and store them in the media cache. So you see, in my case, I have the media cache on my system drive and I have put the disk cache on a separate SSD in my system. Okay, so this is it for the media and disk cache settings. Let's move on. The next setting here is the video preview setting. Uh, we do not have to change anything here. Then we have the appearance setting. You could change the appearance if you like. So for example, if you do not want it to be as dark, you can change the brightness here. But I really like the standard settings right here. You could also change the interactive controls brightness or the focus indicator brightness. You see that these small examples change when I drag these sliders here, but I leave everything here at default because I like the settings as they are. The next option is new project. Here you could load templates for your project. If you create a new project, then you could specify a certain template. We'll take a look at this later. This is not important for now. The autosave is something we can talk about. 
autosave is enabled by default and autosave will create an extra version of your file. So you do not have to be afraid that the autosave will override your file. After Effects will create a new folder and you see you can here specify the location for your autosave files and in this case next to project is selected. So After Effects will save a new folder with its autosave files next to where you saved your project. Here you can change the interval and how many minutes After Effects will save your project and you can also change the maximum project version. I think the standard setting is 5 and I increased this to 10 so that I can go back 10 versions of the autosaves. The next important preference is the memory settings. In the memory settings you can specify a certain amount of your RAM that is reserved for other applications. In my case you see that I have uh, nearly or 64 gigabytes of RAM installed on my system and I reserved 6 gigabytes for other applications. So this RAM is reserved for example for the operating system or if I take a look at the web browser while working or listening to some music or whatever so that there is a little bit of RAM reserved for these applications. And you see that the other RAM now is available for my Adobe Creative Cloud programs like After Effects, Premiere, Prelude, or Photoshop and so on. If you are not sure how much RAM you should reserve for other applications, then you can go to your task manager. You can open up the task manager by pressing Ctrl, Alt and Delete, at least on uh, Windows systems. I do not know how it works on Macs because I actually never worked with any Macs. And then you can go to performance. Uh, this is in German now, but I think that it is called performance in English. And then you can go to the RAM tab and you see how much of RAM is used. Right now, in my case, there are 5.4 gigabytes of RAM used, but I actually have After Effects active. So if I close After Effects, then my operating system will need around 4 gigabytes. So I have a little bit of room here with the 6 gigabytes so I can load additional programs. So this is it for the memory settings. Let's move on. We have the hardware, the audio hardware settings. This is important if you use an external audio device as I do. You see that I use a Focusrite Scarlett. And if After Effects does not recognize your audio hardware automatically, then you can choose it right here and you can choose the default output for audio previews. The next setting enables you to change the mapping of the left and the right channel should work by default and the last one is the synchronization settings in the sync settings you can specify certain preferences that are synchronizable with your adobe creative cloud account so you have the possibility to save certain settings in the adobe creative cloud and here you can specify which one of these settings after effects should synchronize automatically from the Creative Cloud. We'll take a look at this later. Besides the general preferences in After Effects, we also have some project specific settings. Let's take a look at these quickly. If you go to File, then you will find the project settings down here. You can open these up and let's take a quick look. First of all, we have the option to select a setting for the video rendering and the effects. The standard setting here is the Mercury software only. So in this case, all the effects and the video rendering will be done only by the CPU of your computer. If you use a graphics card, a GPU that supports CUDA, like the NVIDIA cards do, then you can change the setting to Mercury GPU acceleration. The next option here is the time and display style. Here you can set the style of your time code. It's not really that important because you can change this pretty easily anytime in the project. So let's skip this one and let's move on to the color settings. And the color settings are quite important, but can also be a little bit complicated. So if you never heard about color management, I, I do not want to go into too much details here because this can be very complex and very confusing. Let me just explain the basics here. First of all, we have the color depth. Here you have three options. If we click here, you see we have eight bits per channel, 16 bits per channel and 32 bits per channel. The higher the bit rate, the better the outcome, the better the quality of, of color blendings of certain effects like glow, of gradients or blurs. 
So here it really depends on what kind of quality your end product needs. If you are working for a quick animation, let's say for a YouTube channel, then 8 bits per channel could be enough. If you're working for a high-end advertisement, for motion graphics advertisement, then maybe you need 16 bits or even 32 bits per channel. If you're working, for example, for compositing for a movie, a cinema, a movie in the cinema, and you're working with HDRI footage, then you definitely would need to work in a 32 bits per channel uh, workspace. But keep in mind that if you set the bits per channel to a higher value, After Effects will need more time to create RAM previews and your previews will also need more memory. In my case for this course, I will leave these settings now at 8 bits per channel, but we will take a look at the differences at certain points in this course. The next option you have is the working space. You see that the standard setting here is none and if this is set to none, that means that color management is turned off. Color management means that there are certain color profiles for certain tasks. So for example, if we want to produce an advertisement for standard SDTV, then we could use a standard SDTV, either the SDTV NTSC or the SDTV PAL setting here, and this is a color space that is a standard for PAL SDTV. If you want to produce an advertisement or a movie for HDTV, then I would recommend that you use this HDTV color space. If you produce a video for web, for example, a motion graphics animation, then you could use the sRGB color space. In my case, I will leave this setting now on none because I do not want to specify any color space because I'm not producing for a certain media channel. If you want to learn more about color management in After Effects, I would recommend that you take a look at the After Effects help because there you find everything explained. I do not want to do this now because it's really not that important for a beginner's course, but let me show you where you can get the additional information. We go to help right here, then you can start up the After Effects help. You need an internet connection because this will lead you to the browser and this will lead you to the Adobe help page. And now you can type in here, color management. And then you can go here and choose managing colors in After Effects. And here you will find all the details about color management in After Effects. So if you are interested and if you really want to understand this to use color management in a professional way, then this is a good starting point to read this article here. Let's go back to our project settings because we have one more option here. And this is the audio settings option. And here you can just specify a standard sample rate for your project. So the standard setting here is 48 kilohertz and I would leave this as it is. Okay, this is it for the preferences for now. We will probably come back during the duration of our course to some of these preferences and check them in a bit more detail. But as a first step and to get us started, these were the most important preferences. And now we can start to dive a little bit deeper into After Effects.